For decades, Otzi the Iceman has captivated scientists, historians, and the public alike. Ever since he was discovered in 1991 by bewildered hikers emerging from the glacial ice, preserved for over 5,000 years in the ice of the Tyrolean Alps, his frozen body revealed secrets of life during Europe's Copper Age. We know his last meal, ibex and red deer with traces of einkorn wheat, his clothing, stitched hides and woven grass, his ailments, arthritis, intestinal parasites, and even Lyme disease, and the brutal manner of his death, an arrow piercing his shoulder, likely finishing him off with a blow to the head, or, as recent studies have shown, the arrow leading to him falling off a cliff, incapacitated and freezing to death. Yet, despite this intense focus on Utzi himself, the world he inhabited, the lives, origins, and relationships of his Copper Age neighbors and contemporaries remained elusive. What kind of society did Utzi live in? Were those around him genetically and culturally like him, or was the Iceman, this solitary, slain traveler of prehistory, truly one of a kind? New research involving ancient DNA reveals a new twist. A team of researchers from the Institute for Mummy Studies in Bolzano, Italy, analyzed ancient DNA from 47 individuals who lived in the South Tyrolean Alps between the Mesolithic and the Middle Bronze Age, roughly from 6,400 to 1,300 BC. 15 of these individuals were from the same general time and region as Utzi himself, who lived around 3,300 BC during the Copper Age. The goal was to determine how Utzi compared genetically to his contemporaries and neighbors, those who might have lived in nearby valleys, hunted the same game, or traded along the same alpine paths. Utzi's story is shaped by millennia of migration and isolation. After the glaciers receded around 18,000 years ago, western hunter-gatherers settled the eastern Alps. Around 7,000 BC, farmers from Anatolia brought agriculture and livestock, blending with local hunter-gatherers. By 4,800 BC, Alpine populations carried about 80 to 90 percent Anatolian ancestry, a genetic signature that remained stable for thousands of years, distinct from Central European groups and closest to that of modern Sardinians. These mountains, once a crossroads, became a refuge that preserved unique lineages and set the stage for the world Utzi would one day inhabit. At first glance, the results seemed to suggest that Utzi was genetically similar to these ancient Alpine people. Most of the individuals, including Utzi, carried high proportions of what is known as Anatolian farmer ancestry, up to 90%, and low proportions of hunter-gatherer ancestry. But when the researchers zoomed in on the lineages, especially the paternal and maternal lines, a different picture began to emerge. Utzi, living between 3,368 and 3,108 BC, stood out in striking ways. His DNA showed 90.5% Anatolian farmer ancestry, one of the highest in Europe at the time, and just 9.5% hunter-gatherer ancestry, similar to another Copper Age individual, COR02, with 90.9% farmer DNA. But his family lines were unique. His Y chromosome, the genetic material passed down exclusively from the father, called GZ6208, was a rare branch of the G2A group, found in Neolithic people from Germany, Spain, France, and Croatia. Most of his neighbors, the 15 individuals who were from the same time and region as Utzi, however, carried a different G2A branch called L497, common in early farmers across Europe. In other words, while the surrounding Alpine population had begun to homogenize genetically, Utzi retained a distinct paternal lineage that set him apart. Utzi's mitochondrial DNA, called K1F, was even more unusual. It's never been found in any other ancient or modern person. It's as if his mother's family line vanished completely without a trace. Was Utzi from a different group of farmers? Perhaps from northern Italy or Anatolia? The researchers need more DNA to solve this puzzle. The DNA of Utzi's neighbors tells us how their society worked. Most men shared the G2AL497Y chromosome, suggesting they stayed in their villages, passing land and traditions to their sons. This is called a patrilocal society, like a family farm where men stay home and women move to join their husbands. The women had diverse mitochondrial DNA, with groups like H, J, K, U, V, and X, including rare subtypes like H3K and J1C12B. This variety shows women came from other regions, marrying into alpine villages and bringing new genes. Two men were exceptions. One had a rare chromosome, possibly from the Eastern Mediterranean or Caucasus, and the other was linked to later Bronze Age migrations. These outliers hint that travelers or newcomers joined the alpine communities. Beyond ancestry, the study explored physical traits. Six individuals, including Utzi, 
likely had brown eyes and dark brown to black hair, typical of Anatolian farmer descendants. Skin color was harder to pin down, ranging from pale to intermediate, but the data weren't clear enough for certainty. All were lactose intolerant, lacking the gene used to digest milk as adults, suggesting dairy wasn't a big part of their diet. Hutsey's last meal, ibex, wheat, and fern, shows he ate a mix of hunted, farmed, and gathered foods, suited to the rugged Alps. Hutsey's possessions tell more of his story. His copper axe, traced to Tuscany, suggests he was part of a trade network stretching across Europe, with amber beads from the Baltic and obsidian from the Mediterranean found in the region. His clothing, made from animal hides, shows skill in leatherworking, and his weapons, a bow, arrows, and dagger, point to a life of hunting or conflict. DNA also revealed what happened in the generations after Utzi's death, how the genetic landscape of the Alps began to shift. Around 2400 BC, as the Copper Age shifted to the early Bronze Age, new people arrived in the Alps from the Pontic Caspian Steppe, a vast grassland stretching from Ukraine to Kazakhstan. They brought horses, bronze tools, and a different genetic signature known as steppe ancestry. Some alpine individuals from this time, like LAS01 and VOL01, carried up to about a third of this ancestry, appearing here earlier than in northern Italy, where it showed up with the Bell Beaker culture a few centuries later. Others carried rare traces of ancestry from the Caucasus and even the Iranian Neolithic, hinting at long-distance migrations and trade routes that made the Alps a true crossroads. Utzi, who lived centuries before these changes, had none of this. His DNA showed about 90% Anatolian farmer ancestry, with almost no signs of mixing from distant groups. This suggests he came from a stable, relatively isolated community, part of a long-standing Alpine population that remained genetically distinct until the broader Bronze Age transformations began. His violent end, with an arrow in his back, raises questions. Was he an outsider, targeted because of his unique ancestry? Was it a robbery, a feud, or a ritual? His rare DNA suggests he might have been a traveler, perhaps from a distant group caught in a moment of violence. This new study shows that Utzi wasn't just a typical Copper Age Alpine resident. He was a man carrying the traces of a different people, perhaps even a fading lineage. The fact that his genetic signature differs from his contemporaries might explain why he was found alone, high in the mountains, far from any known settlement. And as more studies are conducted, scientific methods advance, and ancient genomes continue to be recovered and analyzed, we may yet discover even more about the people Utzi descended from those he lived among, and the forces that shaped their world. His story is far from over. Thank you for watching. If you found this story of Utzi and his mysterious ancestry compelling, let us know what you think. Was he an isolated survivor of a fading population? Or simply one traveler among many in a complex, shifting prehistoric world? Like, share, and subscribe for more journeys into our human past. Farewell.